Hey, my name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today we're going to work on a date and time thing so that you can write a switch statement that will grab whatever day it is and insert this Happy Thursday or Happy Friday uh, text into your website. Now, you may not want to use something like this on your actual site, but the concepts I think might be helpful. For instance, let's say you live stream every Wednesday you can actually use this date time math to have a banner that only shows on your site on Wednesday, but it says, hey, watch the live stream or, or whatever, something like that. Using just vanilla JavaScript and a little bit of CSS and, uh, and HTML. So let's jump right in and write this happy Thursday message. All right, so we're still working on the same site. We've been working on this Utah National Parks site. And uh, all I've got is this index.html page. I'm linking to this welcome.js. I'm using parcel. And once again, if you haven't seen that video, I think it's maybe three or four videos back, go ahead and look that up. I'll, I'll try to remember to add something in the description as well. But basically, it uh, it's going to worry about getting our JavaScript in or compiling our SCSS down to CSS and, and all that magic. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to insert something into this header section. So let's come over here to our welcome.js, and we need to do a few things. The first thing we're going to do is figure out what today is. So I'll tell you what today is. If you come in here, and let's just write something like let day name. We'll use that as our um, yeah as our as our variable here, and we'll say new uh, date. And this will actually just get us whatever today is. So if I come down here and I console log this. You'll see that today when I'm recording this, it's like 6.30ish in the morning, something like that. And uh, so we can come in here and do a few things with this. If we come in here and say day name dot get day, this will actually give us the day of the week. And it spreads it out in an array. So we've got zero is Sunday. Today's Thursday, so it's the fifth position in the array. So zero, one, two, three, four. That's the fifth position. And so we can figure out very easily what the day is of whatever, you know, whenever somebody visits our site based on you know the the array that we get back from dot get day. So this is a perfect use case for something called a switch statement. And we can come in here and say switch and then we pass it whatever we want it to run the switch on. And what we run it to, want it to run it on is actually that day dot get name. So what am I doing erasing that? Okay, so let's say switch and then uh, day name dot get day. Right. Again, today's Thursday, it's going to give us four back for this. And now what we want to do is tell it, hey, here are the different options you're going to be passed. We need to do uh, two things. We need to, one, send it some options, and two, we need to write some kind of default statement. In fact, if I come over here and just let's look at the MDN docs here. And again, I think it's always really helpful to uh, look at these things. They'll help you yeah, just get a, a better sense of both how to read documentation and also give you a much better understanding than I can give you here. So these switch statements, you'll see here we have a case, and here's kind of the syntax. Uh, then you pass it, whatever the case is, and a colon, and then you tell it to do something, and then you break from it. Same thing each time uh, you give it. Here it's saying either of these. Uh, then they're going to run this console log, and they write a break, and then once again you have the default. So you give it some options, and you give it a default, and then after each of those you break. Now, I've actually always added a break after the default, but it doesn't have one here. So let's see what we can do. Oh, it does have one down here. Come on, man, help me out. All right, well, if we had time to read all this, this one doesn't. So if we had time to read all this, we could figure out exactly why it's adding it sometimes up there. But all of these examples, it's not. So I'm just going to leave those alone. Cool. All right, so that's what we're going to do here in, uh, in our area. So we'll say case, and then... Case is whatever it's going to get passed. So we know it'll be past 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, those are our seven areas of our array. So let's, today we know is 4, so let's just write the case for 4 because that's the only thing right now that's going to do anything. And we'll say console.log. Uh, it's Thursday. Oh, I can't do that. It's Thursday. Pardon the bad grammar. And it's Thursday. Cool. So if we come in here and say it's Friday, and then change this to five, it should do nothing. Okay, perfect, because there is no case for that. So we'll come back here and we will say break, because we need to do that, and then we'll write our default. Uh, for the default, we'll say something like, I don't know, let's console log, you have created a new day. 
of the week. Hey, uh, future Chris here. I was editing this and realized I never explained why we needed a fault case. So the idea is if you pass something into a switch statement and it doesn't hit any case, it needs to still know what to do. Now, in this case, we're passing it the days of the week. There are only seven. There will only ever be seven. And so that is why um, my hilarious joke about adding a new day of the week is in that console log because there's no way you would ever hit that default, but the switch still requires it. All right, back to the video. Okay, so <laughs> this is very helpful. Now, what we want to do is obviously not console log something. We want it something to show up here in the index.html. Now, we could have something in here that was already like an H1, and it says it's, and then you, we just insert the Thursday or the Friday or, with, or whatever, but I'm just going to insert it uh, via JavaScript here. And let's just write this as an arrow function. So I'll say welcome message, and we're going to pass in the day, like Thursday, Friday, you know, whatever. And then let's come in here, and we're going to say, with that day, we want to do a few things. First of all, we want to grab that header. So we'll say query selector. And what we want to grab is the actual header tag. And then we want to um, create that h1 element. You can do that with something called document.create element. So we'll come in here and say welcome uh, message tag or h1. Uh, I don't know, something like that. And then we'll say uh, document.create element. And we're going to create an h1 tag. And inside this h1 tag, we're going to say, all right, give us that welcome message h1 dot enter text. And here's what we want to set the inner text to. Using these back ticks here, we can interpolate uh, this day down into it. So we'll come in here and say happy. And we'll use that day that we're getting passed from down here eventually. And we're going to insert it, insert it there with an exclamation point for extra pizzazz. And then we're going to come in here and once we're going to just dump it into this header. So we're going to say append child welcome message h1. Okay, now what we've done here, let's kind of go backwards and I'll explain it a little more slowly here. You've got this function, welcome message, that takes in some kind of argument. And we're going to send it the argument day from the switch statement eventually. Once it comes in here, we're going to say, hey, go ahead and grab the header, then create an h1 element, then insert this text into the h1 element. Using these back ticks, we can both add normal English here, and then also we can grab and interpolate this variable down, or the argument that we've gotten here, and add it as part of that inner text. Once we've done all of that, and it's just sitting there waiting to be inserted, it's not on the page yet, we will then append it to the actual header that we grabbed up this way. Now, by waiting to append it till the end, we're not forcing our page to, you know, kind of reload each time. Uh, if we were to like append it early and then add the text in, we'd actually be causing two like quick refreshes. And so you want to do whatever you need to do first and then dump it in just the one time. All right, now we still need to actually use that function. So let's come in here and we'll say welcome message. And the day we want to pass it is Thursday. Okay, so if we come in here and we refresh, you see immediately it jumps it right in there. Did I add two exclamation points somewhere? Oh, I added one here and I added one down there. I mean, we don't need to be that excited. All right, happy Thursday. Um, and now let's go ahead and switch this to like Friday, even though it's a lie or Saturday, just so you can see how that might uh, work differently. Now, I have only got this one case so far because I've only got the one uh, day that'll actually work. If I try to show you this on a different day, it's not going to work, but let's go ahead and come in here and add these. Let me add these quickly so you don't have to watch me type days of the week. All right, as you can see, I definitely miscounted. We only have the seven days of the week, and then this is our default. And since they didn't add a break in the documentation, I'm not adding a break after the default. So uh, there we go. And uh, like I said, this will just run immediately as soon as anybody shows up on your page. So this will always be up to date. Now, once again, you may not want to use this to welcome them. They probably know what day it is, but you can use these kinds of switch statements to insert different text depending on the day um, or the time of the day. And if you're doing things like live streaming, things that are time sensitive on your site, um, you can use that to show messages or hide things whenever you want to based on the, the day. So hopefully that's helpful to you. If you want to know more about this date, you can actually grab times and all this kind of stuff. Again, just come to MDM and look for the date 
And uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here that will help you kind of understand here what we did is grab the get day. So anyhow, uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here, get time, uh, get seconds, get the month of the year, all this kind of stuff. And uh, you can do a bunch of cool stuff with this uh, date object. So, all right, thanks so much for watching and happy coding.